All right. Well, hi, everyone. Um, glad everyone could join. If there's people out there, I don't, I don't know why it's not showing um, how many people are on right now. I have no idea. Um, so anyway, yeah, my name is Kevin Gregus, if you don't know me, a uh, seminarian uh, for the Archdiocese of Chicago. Uh, but St. Thomas is uh, definitely my what I consider is my home parish. Um, and so we're going to do another uh, night of Ask a Seminarian. So any questions are, are on the table. Uh, faith, any of the Cali Church, news. So yeah, so I'm back in Mundelein Seminary. That's where I am if, um, for school. I'm just about to, I'm not just about, I have started my second year in theology. Um, we It's a little quiet right now, a little laid low, where uh, we were asked to do a two-week sort of soft quarantine uh, here in Mundelein. There's guys coming from all over the country, from you know states that you know are probably on Illinois' naughty list as, as far as COVID goes. Uh, so they just said, hey, everyone, as soon as you get here, do a two-week quarantine. And we're still, go, we're, we're not like totally confined to our rooms. We're out to probably get, go get food. Uh, we, classes started this week, so we've been in class together, but of course, masks and uh, extra cleaning and just little extra precautions for these two weeks. Um, so yeah, let's start with, I'm going to start with a quick prayer, and then uh, we'll, I'll get into, uh, I'll get into uh, what I did this summer and kind of what my semester looks like here at Mondeline, and then we'll, uh, and then we'll open up for some questions. All right, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, we thank you for gathering us here. Thank you for giving us this day. Um, we thank you for giving us this medium to be able to communicate with each other and connect with uh, other faithful Catholics, anyone who's searching for the truth. I ask you to be with us tonight to open our hearts and our minds to what you will and your spirit move amongst us. This is all through your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, I've got some people from uh, from Guatemala. Hola, Eti y Mirna. Saludos. Well, uh, sorry, I might. <laughs> I thought. Uh, I. See, rezé vísperas en español esta noche. All right, there's there's my Spanish for tonight. <laughs> uh, so we uh, we just got back here two weeks ago to Mundelein. At least I got back here um, about a, maybe, maybe a week and a half ago, and we had a we, we start each year with a silent retreat. So there's some guys who do some orientation. If they're new to Mundelein, they do or, orientation, meet other new classmates. Um, they have to do that this year, and then we um, we had a silent retreat. We start every year with a silent retreat, uh, five days, uh, nothing huge. Um, it's it's pretty calm. It's just right here on campus, um, and if you've never been to Mundelein, it's it's absolutely gorgeous as hopefully as soon as uh, you know as we sort of return back to you know where we can start you know traveling and visiting more places I would love to have people here show you around unfortunately campus is closed to uh, to guests right now um, but hopefully not hopefully that will not that not be forever um, so it was a great real great retreat it was uh, the the uh, guys who are in pre theology and in first and second theology I'm in second theology we do a what's called a preached retreat so we invite someone in to give the retreat, he preaches two conferences a day, and then the rest of the day is yours. We have mass, of course, and uh, and there's meals, but it's all, it's all in it's all in silence, and uh, just a really good time to prepare for the year um, with God. And it's it's a it was a real it's always a real blessed time. It's always um, one of the, one of the uh, favorite things to do of the year, just to kind of. After the summer, and of course, after all the craziness that was that's that's been uh, that's been COVID nineteen, it's good to kind of just be here. Our preacher this year was uh, was Father Benedict Lavolpe, who is the rector over at Marytown, um, which is right next door to Mondeline. If hope I, I don't know if any of people um, from the Chicago area have ever been to Marytown. It's if you haven't, um, I would. Uh, it's gorgeous. They have they, they have twenty four hour adoration. It's back. Uh, their their adoration twenty four adoration is back. Um, after I think it was closed, of course, closed off for a little while. But they have it's a beautiful chapel. It's also the national shrine to to Saint Maximilian Kolbe. So they have a Cole Kolbe museum. They have a gift store. It's a really cool place. You can do retreats there, uh, 
conferences and all sorts of stuff. I'm not sure what they have going right now, but you can at least come for mass, adoration, confession, something like that. I would highly encourage you to uh, do Mary Town. And Father Benedict was, it was a great, um, very pretty simple. He, was, he talked about um, the priest as uh, alter Christus, which is Latin for just another Christ. And that's what the priest is asked to be, is another Christ. Um, so it was, it was real good to come back, to be back on campus. It really is awesome to be back here. Uh, if I'm back. This is my room. I, I'll give you a, here's my, uh, here's what a room at Mundelein looks like. There's my, uh, that's my chair. I read, re read in there most nights. Uh, we, everyone has their own bathroom. I'm not going to show you that. It's a bathroom. I got my bed. It's not made. Sorry, mom. It's never made. Um, she's not surprised by that. And then I got some, some bookshelves over here, some icons. This, uh, if you see this Mary, the Mary statue of there, I actually got that in, in Guatemala, um, at one of the markets in Guatemala. It's this beautiful, uh, uh, figurine as well, statue, uh, of Mary. And, uh, yeah, so that's my room. And so it's great to be back. And it, it was, a it was a great summer. I think the last time I talked to you, we were, um, I was still at St. Alphonsus in, in uh, Lakeview in the neighborhood in Chicago. And um, we, I, I was doing uh, work with this, this group in Chicago called Faith Hub. It's an uh, arm of the, uh, of the Archdiocese of Chicago. Um, their, one of their goals is really to bring as leaders together. As, as Chicago is kind of doing some uh, reshuffling of parishes, combining parishes, closing parishes. Um, they really want a group. Um, they wanted a group to... What are the best practices? What are the what are the things that are working? How how do we train leaders? How do we make sure everything's being preserved and, and taught to all the parishes once they combine? And so we uh, I, I helped them out. I did a lot of uh, video editing. I was, it's been fun to talk to some of the guys, kind of what they did. The summer, of course, everyone's summer plans changed uh, except for maybe a few guys. Uh, and you know, and, and part of that is always like you know, oh, I, I could teach myself how to do. <laughs> The live streaming stuff, the the video editing stuff, how to do all this stuff, and and you know, it was great to you know hear all these guys rising rising to the occasion, uh, and and able to uh, to do that. So I did a lot of video editing and um, helped with some, with some prayer meetings and stuff like that. And so uh, finished out the summer there, and I was able to actually spend a, a few weeks at at home with my parents. Uh, it was an awesome time just to uh, hang with them before coming back to Mondelein. Uh, Good food. It was great. My parents have a new deck, so it was great to be back there uh, and hanging out with them. And um, yeah, and so uh, we're, I'm totally ready to start this year. It's um, it, it's going to be a different year, of course. And everyone's out there, you you know you know it's a different year if you're if you're especially if you have kids in school or maybe you're you're it's some some hybrid of home and and in school. I'm sure jobs are still not quite back to where they were. And so here it's, it's, uh, it, you know, it's actually not felt totally, you know, totally strange. I mean, we'd already been doing all the, all the stuff for, for, you know, all the protocols at mass and you kind of already used to those. Um, so those have continued, um, kind of big, probably the biggest change is that our dining hall is, uh, we, we, we don't, we're not eating in the dining hall and they're kind of prepackaging meals. Um, they're going to slowly kind of reopen it as, as do that. They want to make sure that all the workers are protected, um, and whatnot. So the good news is in the summer, uh, or as the weather's nice, we've been able to eat outside and that's been real nice. We got some cool patios and picnic tables over the place. And so people have been able to, you know, take advantage, eat outside. And that's been, that's been very nice. And so as far as this, uh, this semester, this year goes for me, uh, in second theology, I am. I have. I have seven classes. It's crazy. It's a. It's one of the more academically demanding semesters you'll you'll take um, at least here at Mundelein. I know um, a lot. Of, a lot of seminaries are, are probably the same. You could you know ask uh, now Deacon John McFadden. It's fun to say, be able to say that. Um, I'm sure he'd tell you that that, that second year is it's uh, it can be uh, one of the tougher ones academically, but. Uh, we finish our for kind of our first cycle. We have classes. We do Monday. Monday is a set of classes. Tuesday is a set of classes, and then Thursday, Friday kind of mirror Monday and Tuesday. 
And so as far as what I'm taking, I'm taking, let's see, I'll go in order. So I'm taking the uh, class on the sacraments of initiation. So learning some sacramental theology and then, of course, baptism, um, confirmation, and, and, and holy communion would be the three sac sacraments of initiation. So a class all about that. We got a class on medical ethics. So, um, it's, you know, all of like the, you know, a lot of hop button things. I mean, a lot of people, this is the things a lot of people ask and a lot of people want to know about. Um, and, you know, important when we're doing, you know, work in hospitals. Um, one, of, one of my summers will be, you know, working in a, working as a, you know, ch chaplain in, in a hospital uh, somewhere in Chicago. Um, a class, it's, it's called uh, Sexuality and Vocation. It's really kind of the, um, just talking about the sexual ex ethics of, uh, of the church. Um, again, a lot of, a lot of hot button topics. There. Those are two moral theology classes. Um, then we have a class, um, it's called Christology and Soteriology. Um, so the, uh, that's, it's literally the study of Christ and the study of him as, as savior. And, uh, it's, it's a pretty intense class. It's, it's probably one of the, again, it's, it's a academically rigorous class, but our professor is, is really great. If, if anyone listens to, uh, to Sheila Logminas on relevant radio, it's her son is a priest for Chicago. Um, and probably one of the smartest guys I've, you know, we said our first class with him today, crazy smart guy. Um, but I'll talk about, you know, Christ and, and who he is and, and, uh, and then, and, and how, he, how the saving action that he, that he, that passed so much, how that all works. And then we have, oh, this afternoon, a class on all about the Reformation. Um, it's real good to know about uh, the Reformation, you know, how all, all that happened, the response. And it's, again, you know, we had a lot of questions around that um, in parishes. And um, then a class, all about the Synoptic Gospels. Uh, which are Matthew, Mark, and Luke would be the, the three synoptic gospels because they um, they're all they're all very you know very similar very sim f f follow a similar structure whereas John is is kind of its own thing and then I am taking a uh, an elective this year in learning Hebrew so I'm excited about that um, with with a guy who's been teaching here for years and years and years a biblical scholar so so yeah so I'm I'm looking forward to the year it's going to be a uh, should be a real good one. Um, really, really looking forward to it. Um, like my class, um, solid class. We've there's 33. You got that right? 33 guys in in uh, second theology. And then we're, this is all. This semester is kind of a preparation. And once we finish the semester, we go and go on an internship in a parish. So. People at St. Thomas, you'll be very familiar with um, Father Kyle Mano. Um, uh, uh, Father, I mean, we've, we've had a lot of Father Kyle Mano is definitely one who was at Monday Line. His internship was at was uh, at St. Thomas, and so he was with you for uh, a while. It was from from February all the way until July or August. So gr great time to just be in a parish. That's you know that's your entire thing. Diving into ministry. Learning from the pastor, um, just being with the people, um, and so we look again. It's going to be really good. It's almost a little, uh, you know, light, you know, reward for kind of finishing up this, you know, uh, challenging semester. Um, all right. So with that, that's my uh, that's what my semester is going to look like. That's kind of what I've been doing this summer, where I've been. And uh, yeah, so we can get into some comments or uh, some questions. So if you would like to ask a question, just go ahead and drop it uh, just in the comment feed on the side, and um, I'll I'll answer as many as I can. Um, yeah, all right, let's go through. And it can be about anything. Uh, does not have to be just about uh, Catholicism or the faith. It could be about um, thoughts about. Yeah, uh, news. I I'd prefer not to talk about politics. Um, <laughs> trying to <laughs> do my best to stay away from what I'm. I'm uh, the election cycle, which I'm very much not looking forward to. Um, sports, but I, again, anything you can talk to talk talk ask about anything. All right. So, uh, all right. Kevin Clark uh, asks, "What is uh, my favorite Christian music song?" Oh man. 
Um, so my favorite, I'll start with my favorite hymn. My favorite hymn, um, so something that was written for, uh, for the, you know, for the church for use in, uh, in devotions and things like that is the Pange Lingua. It's been my favorite since I was a kid. I mean, I, uh, it's, it's the one that you'll, you'll, if you haven't, if you don't know that it by name, you'd recognize it if you've ever been to a Holy Thursday Mass when they're doing the, the procession with the Eucharist to the altar of repose, it's the song that's sung um, during that time. Pange lingua gloriosi. Sorry for my voice, um, but it's oh, it's just a beautiful song, and it, and uh, it's it was cool to like to learn to, when I learned Latin to uh, kind of get the more direct uh, translation. But it's all about Christ, how He was born for us, how He's given for us, and then just it talks about um, the night of the Last Supper, and then and then goes into like. Just the, the kind of the, the great sacrament, the great gift he's left us. Um, oh man, other ones. Um, I'm a big fan of Matt Marr. Um, I think Alive Again is from my favorite Matt Marr song. It's actually I, I discovered reading through uh, Augustine's Confessions that actually that song, Alive Again, is actually just kind of uh, it's taken straight from the Confessions. It's kind of kind of it was a fun realization. Like oh yeah, you know, uh, you shattered my darkness. You know, wash away my blindness. It's all from those are Augustine's words right from the Confessions. And let's see. Um, I, I mean, I can't, I can't not shout out. There's so the folks who uh, who are involved with with Kyrios, as Kevin was, um, and then and the night retreats we had at St. Thomas for for a while. Uh, we always ended the dance with a song called "Jesus Freak" by DC Talk. And uh, you know, what, what would you say? Yeah. What, what what would people think if they hear uh, if they knew? What would people think if they hear that I'm a Jesus freak? You know, it's all about you know witnessing. There's some rap in there about John the Baptist, and it's it was just a fun just we just you know go go all out uh, at at the end of the dance. So, um, so I, as far as like those are Christian ones, I, I think some of my favorite songs that are sometimes they're they're they have Christian themes. Um, but they don't, they're not necessarily like, you know, a Christian rock band. So I think one example for me would be Mumford and Sons. If you guys ever listen to Mumford, this is the band Mumford and Sons. I think they've, uh, you know, very popular band from, from, from England, but they do a, a great job of just like, they've got a Christian themes in their music without being overtly Christian. So people are, you know, jamming out to Mumford and Sons and they're, you know, not even real, maybe realizing the, the beauty that they're seeing. There's, I mean, there's a song called, uh, you know, Awake My Soul, Beautiful. Um, roll away your stone has some good stuff. The cave is uh, the the line of uh, you know come out of the cave walking on your hands and see the world hanging upside down. That's actually a, a, a reference to Saint Francis of Assisi and him and him doing that uh, or having a vision of of that uh, in his cave. So um, those are probably some of my favorite ones. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm guarantee I'm I'm missing one. Oh, and you, we can't forget now Kanye West. <laughs> Uh, his album uh, "Jesus Is King" now is <laughs> it, it's a it's I love it that there's a song called "God Is" just just really it's beautiful. You never thought I never thought you'd say about like you know Kanye West talking about the faith, but it's it's actually very good. So um, there, there's some if you want to go listen to them. All right. Um, so let's see, Sarah uh, Sarah Slack, new mother, Sarah Slack. Congratulations. Um, she asked some of my middle school, some of my middle school students were asking about confession during COVID. If they can't go to confession because of COVID, um, what would the church say about mortal sins? Is there a way they can receive absolution without going to confession in person? That's a great question. So they can't receive sacramental absolution. Um, without going to confession in person, confessing their sins, uh, and receiving that uh, that absolution from the priest of, of the priest saying, "I absolve you uh, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit." And of course, we believe that that is Jesus working through the priest. The priest is doing none of that um, by himself. Um, that's totally through the power that he's been given. It's been handed down, given to him, and it's it's Jesus forgiving those sins. So. Um, so, so what do you do? So you can't go to confession. Your parents won't let you. The, the, your church isn't offering confessions. It's it's it was a real it's a real a real thing. And it, and and we also can kind of 
in this, we can kind of have some solidarity with our, our brothers and sisters who are in remote places in the Amazon or in Africa or even places in the United States that just aren't close to a priest. Um, they, they don't have, you know, frequent uh, ability to get to confession. I know I'm very blessed. I mean, I'm at a seminary with a bunch of priests. Mary Town's right next door. They have confessions twice a day. Um, so I, I've got great access to great access to that. But it's, uh, so what do you do? So we believe that God is, uh, he gave us the sacraments to give us direct grace, sanctifying grace. But God is not bound to those sacraments. And we believe that God is completely merciful. God is mercy himself. So in that case, you know, you're, you're, in, you're in a state of mortal sin or um, it's, it's some, some, sort of, some sort of sin. Um, while you can't receive sacramental absolution, um, we trust that God is, is merciful and, and that, you know, if you take, take into that some, something into that into, into consideration when, you know, on, on, on your judgment day or whatever. Um, and that's not to say that, that, you know, well, you know, I don't have to go to confession now because, you know, Kevin said that, you know, well, God, you know, we trust, trust in God. No, like this gift of confession is a beautiful sacrament and it's, it's a, it's a healing. It's not just to wash away sins. Yes, that's, that's it does that and puts us in a state of grace, but it's a sacrament of healing and, and it's, and, and we get that healing directly from, from Jesus through the priest. Um, hopefully that answered the question. I know it's a. Uh, it's complicated. I, I, you know, that's again. I've, I've, uh, I think, through the next year or the year after that, I get a kind of the formal class. But there is a uh, where you there's a class at Mundelein or and any, any any seminary where you actually do practice confessions, um, and, and and kind of how to, you know, be in the confessional, how to deal with you know situations or or whatever, and just how to make sure you deal with that, you know, mercifully. So, um, so yeah. Uh, Follow-up question from Kevin. Favorite secular song? I, so my favorite song of all time, and I, I would I would say that again, there's some Christian themes to it. Um, is there's a song uh, by a band called Dispatch, uh, called The General, and it's all about this general who there there he's uh, his men are about to go into this battle, and he he wakes up, he has. Um, this dream or this realization that he doesn't want his men to, he doesn't want to lead his men into death, into what he sees as needless death. So he's, he, he stays and is going to, um, you know, sacrifice. And he's, he's this old general, this old, uh, you know, kind of this veteran. And he says, you know, young, you know guys, go, go on your way. Uh, you're, you know, you have, you have lies to live. And so I think there's, it's just a really cool song. It's all acoustic. Um, so I would encourage you to check out the song. It's called The General by Dispatch. Okay. Kev, Kev he's, I love it. He's, he's on a roll here. All right, so what's my favorite sport to play? And then my favorite to watch. All right, my favorite to play. So my favorite to play growing up, we'll start there, was baseball. And I might still be baseball. Um, I played uh, all the way through, you know, starting with T-ball, Crystal Lake Little League, or at the time it was Continental Little League. Um, and, uh, played Babe Ruth high school. I loved it. And, um, I definitely, you know, after, you know, going, moving, moving to college, I didn't have a chance to really play. You know, I threw some, we played softball. It wasn't the same, but, um, growing up, uh, definitely baseball. Now I think it might be, uh, ice hockey. I got into ice hockey. Oh man. I was, it was right after I uh, got my first job in Maryland. Um, I like, you know, I've always skated. My mom always had to skate, and so uh, we. I knew I knew how to skate. I'm like, let's let's try the hockey thing. And so my fir the first league I joined was this like mixed league, and so there was guys who were definitely worse than I definitely worse than I was. But there's also guys who played like college, and there was even a guy who played in like minor league hockey. I mean, this guy was really good. Um, I, I blocked one of his shots once, and I couldn't feel my leg the next day. It was ridiculous. Um, so yeah, so that's, uh, that's my, and, and then I would also say, uh, I, I love, I do love to golf, even though I'm not very good. 
Um, as far as favorite sports to watch, I think baseball is probably number one, and I think one A is college football, and it's like it's killing me. Um, my Wolverines are not able to play this this year, or at least not right away. They might have some deal to play at Thanksgiving and and indoors through the winter or something like that. Um, but I just love general college football. Um, just it's just the the energy, the kind of the, the craziness. It's something I, I think you don't quite get in the NFL. They're NFL is certainly a higher game, but it's I know there's a there's an excitement and energy to college football, and I love watching golf. I love watching golf. Uh, unironically, it's uh, I grew up watching with my dad. Um, uh, the Masters, of course, is the best tournament. So one of I think probably my favorite sporting event of the whole year is the Masters. Um, it got postponed this year, of course, but it's going to be in November, and I, you can bet that I will be watching every minute as as much as as much as I can fun the fun part is to, don't tell my professors but you can watch it online so I might be uh, watching a little masters online all right well if anyone that's, that's the last of the questions that are on there if anyone has any other questions please uh, drop them about about anything um, about anything um, I, I guess I, I, a question I know we get a lot um, is what what do you do? All day as a seminarian, um, you know what's 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 your day look like? So let, let me give you a typical. That's a, I'll tell you what today looked like uh, for me. So uh, I woke up at mm, let's see about six o'clock and um, got up a little uh, kind of a little more morning offering and then uh, heading over headed over to the chapel to get ready for mass. Um, I'm one of the masters of ceremonies. Uh, here at Mundelein, which means I, uh, you know, we've, I think there's, I don't know, 12, 14 guys. Um, is that right? Maybe it's, no, it's not because the, the guys, the guys, gra the guys got graduated, they got ordained. Um, the, the, some of the guys. So anyway, uh, I, it was my turn to MC this morning. So went over there, got prepared, um, prayed the office of readings in the chapel, in our main chapel. And then we have mass. We have mass, all, morning prayer first, sorry. And then, and then mass all together. Um, this year it's a little different. We can't have mass all together as a community because of um, the the size um, uh, of of the chapel and, and social distancing and all that kind of stuff. So we we're split between uh, our main chapel, again beautiful, and we have a house chapel in the building that I that this, this building that I live in. It's all all the guys live live in this in here. We all live on halls, and then there's a house chapel that Bishop Barron renovated. Uh, when he was still so Father Baron, he was the rector at Mundelein, uh, and it's named after John Paul II. So we're we're split between uh, those two those two chapels. I'm over in the main chapel with uh, the guys in my hall. So yeah, so morning prayer, mass together, and then we have breakfast. Uh, just grab it from the from our. It's called the the refectory. It's it's a term borrowed from monasteries, the dining hall that where the food was called the refectory. Um, have a uh, breakfast and then at nine o'clock, nine fifteen is our first class. This today it was Christology. Um, the, the professor is doing it only one day a week um, because he's traveling from University of Chicago where he's the chaplain. And so uh, we have that class for three hours uh, a day once a week, which is not normal for classes here, but it's kind of an exception to be made because it's really, um, it's, He's, he's, it's worth it to, to have him as a professor. Um, so we have class, um, the class period is nine to, t 9 to noon, and then we have a break for lunch. Again, go pick up pick up food from the refectory. And then we have class again in the afternoon. Um, this afternoon was uh, Reformation, and then um, right after that, Synoptic Gospels. So um, some guys have some periods off. Like, for example, I've got uh, Monday uh, afternoon, from 2.30 to 4, I have that off. And then there's a kind of a break um, from 2 till, or from 2, from 4 till eh, 5.15. Um, uh, today, we actually went outside, and uh, it wasn't great weather today, um, but we took advantage of it, at least not raining, and we played some Ultimate Frisbee today. So there's a lot of guys who play sports here. We have, well, when the gym's open, it's closed right now. Um, we have a basketball court, but we're, right now we're, we're outside. We're playing ultimate frisbee. Guys are playing soccer. Uh, we're gonna baseball started up here pretty soon. So um, definitely a ton, ton of uh, room to play sports, um, walk around the lake, run and whatnot. That's a good time to do it right in the afternoon, kind of four to five. And then 
Uh, at 5.15, we do evening prayer. Um, on Tuesday nights, it's in uh, what's called language groups. So guys want to tr uh, um, work on, uh, so I do, I do eating prayer in Spanish. Um, so uh, <laughs> for my teachers, uh, uh, cada, cada uh, martes, uh, rezo uh, vísperas en español. So, um, and there's, 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 uh, there's an Asian prayer group, there's uh, African, so just a, kind of a way to get exposed to different cultures and still do eating prayer together. So, um, so yeah, and then after that we have dinner, and then the night's pretty much, um, it's kind of, kind of our, our own, um, so tonight I'm, of course, doing this, um, but, you know, guys, sometimes they'll, you know, hang, hang out in, um, and, and to talk, um, there's, you know, sometimes musical practices. There's a lot of guys, you know, of course, we have homework to do. So um, there's, there's some of that. And then um, at some point, I get a holy hour, and I usually do a, my holy hour in the evening. So it's a time to be in the chapel to do some personal prayer. Um, do night prayer as part of that. And then I'm usually, um, try try to be in bed by somewhere between 10 and 11. So that's a typical day uh, for us at, at Mondelein. All right. So Kev, he's got the got the run. Kev Mo. All right. Uh, have you ever done a practice run of mass or any sacrament yet? Uh, I have not. Uh, that's part of the uh, curriculum. You'll start doing that uh, our uh, your third year of theology because after third year you're ordained a deacon, and so uh, in there's a there's a deacon practicum class where you'll do um, the one of the, probably the main thing is to learn how to um, you do baptisms, and then it's to do um, uh, being able to, you know, to, to helping out with deacon at the mass. There's liturgies, um, you know, you can you, there's there's you're able to uh, to hear vows at weddings. You're able to do wake services, um, so things like that. Um, so you definitely you know practice those things, and then your fourth year when you're uh, when you're a deacon, you uh, the first semester you do like I said the the, the practicum class in confession and then in your um, second year it's it's the mass practicum and that's kind of when it's when it gets when it's, it's real and it's it's fun because like you know guys uh, of course they, there's a class to do like kind of learn all the parts and you know that uh, it's it's you know it's more than just you know reading there's kind of there's there's an art to it uh, Ars celebrandi is is what it's referred to the art of celebration the art of celebrating mass and so there's you know you it's the, you know, how, how do we make this, you know, prayerful, beautiful, uh, valid, all that stuff. And so you do that. And uh, a lot of guys will kind of set up a little altar um, in their room and they'll practice in the room. So it was fun. Uh, we had three deacons on our, on our floor last semester or last year. And it was fun to hear them, you know, my next door neighbor uh, practicing mass. It was just kind of wild. You've kind of known this guy for a few years and, and here he is practicing for, for mass, practicing chanting, all the, all the parts, all the movements and things like that. Um, so, uh, to answer your second question, am I pumped to get to that point? Absolutely. Absolutely pumped to do that. I, I'm sure there's going to be this very surreal moment of like, holy cow, I'm actually, you know, at the point where I'm getting ready for this. So, very looking forward to, to doing those practicums. All right. Sammy's here. Uh, how's my retreat? Uh, so, like I said before, it was, it was, um, it was real great. I could, uh, Sheriff made a few graces from there. I, I was reading through a, um, this text of, uh, it's written about uh, St. Therese of Lisieux, who I feel has uh, really, uh, she, I feel she's kind of chased me down in the last year and a half, two years. Um, I don't know if you've ever, guys ever had that experience of a saint kind of chasing you down, of like, have a devotion to me. Um, and I know St. Therese always, there's, you know, she had a long time correspondence with a seminarian and who, who became a priest and, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of guys here who who have a great devotion to Saint Therese. We have a statue uh, here outside of our chapel uh, with with a rose garden around it, um, and so it's beautiful. So it's all about like talking about uh, working through weakness uh, and 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 your weakness. And I I think one thing God has really re really revealed to me on my on my retreat was just kind of like um, 
I mean, not necessarily. I mean, that's, that's certainly exposing exposing some of those weaknesses where where I need God most to help, and and really kind of see it's in all areas, but maybe some more than others. And uh, it's almost like a, a breaking uh, a, a breaking down of 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 a man to to kind of the core, and then and then building back up. So I feel like I'm at that point. The first three years is kind of this, you know, breaking down of of, of maybe expectations of of uh, you know past. Yeah, habits I've, I've held on to, or, or and, and not necessarily that those are bad habits, but like, you know, trying to transform those things. How do I, how do I move those things into service of the church? And so uh, that was a guy kind of revealed those to me, and uh, that was a, a real, uh, a real beautiful thing. I was able to read, read, uh, finish a, a novel I've been reading, and then called Love in the Ruins. It was all right. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I recommend it necessarily. Um, but, uh, and I was, it was you know, we have, they got a lot of reading done, um, as, as, as long, along with a lot of praying, walked around the lake each day and it was, it was very nice. So overall, great, really great retreat. Um, yeah, and it, uh, if you ever have a chance to do a sound retreat, even if it's just for a weekend, I really, really recommend it. Um, so I guess I, I can get, I can get to, this is, this kind of ties into the next question of, of when did I know, um, that I should come to seminary? Um, and then I should study, study to be a priest and, and be formed to be a priest. So it happens that kind of the final call uh, for me, when it really crystallized, was on a silent retreat. I was making it with um, some friends um, from Chicago, this men's group that I was a part of. I still kind of, I'm certainly friends, still friends with, with, with several of them. Uh, it was great, a great blessing. I got to actually get to hang with a lot of them this summer. It was uh, really fun to, to to be with them. Kind of a uh, an unforeseen uh, grace of the summer was being able to hang with a lot of uh, close friends in Chicago. But anyway, I was uh, making a retreat, a silent retreat. It was the first one I'd ever done. Um, this was in uh, 2017, in January. And what we did was we rented a uh, Airbnb in Highland Park. It was it was pretty much a it was like a mini mansion sort of in Highland Park. If you're from Highland Park. Pretty ritzy area, um, and there was you know probably 20, 25 uh, guys in in this house, and we were just, you know all just staying there. And we had a um, a priest from Mundelein actually come and 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 lead it for us, and and kind of like this is what I was talking about with the preaching. So you kind of preach a few things during the during the day, some thoughts to go to prayer with. Um, uh, hear confessions, say mass for us, that kind of stuff. And so one of his little preaching conferences for us, uh, I don't remember a lot of what he said in this conference except for one thing, and that was that prayer should not be exhausting. That prayer should not be exhausting. And that is, uh, to date, one of the best pieces of advice I've gotten on prayer. That it should not be exhausting. It should be, and it, you know, it should be life giving. It should be a time of of being just being with God. Um, and but for me, prayer was this kind of exhausting. It could be this exhausting thing, especially if I did it for more than 10, 15 minutes, where I'd try to have all these thoughts and like, oh, this is like all these things, and just really kind of work and and do all these things, and I've got to, I've got to fill the time with all this stuff. Um. And so uh, I, I'm like, wow, that's, prayer should not be exhausting. It's kind of hit me. Like, that's, I should, should not. I, it's, it is exhausting. What, what, how do I make it not exhausting? And so um, we had an ad- adoration that night, and um, I took that advice to heart in adoration. And prayer should not be exhausting. So I was quiet. It's like I'm just going to sit here and just, and just be here. There's some praise and worship going on in the back, and I was sort of, Kind of listening to that and praying with that, but just really trying to be, uh, you know, just just quiet and you know, trying to no thoughts. And it's again, if you've done prayer, sometimes it can be very very tough. It's it's very easy to be distracted and whatever. So I was doing that, and in, in the in the process of that, uh, God showed me that priesthood and seminary would be exactly would fulfill everything that I loved, like and to take it to this whole another level. You know, I have a great love for teaching, for brotherhood, for liturgy, for the church herself. I have all those things. And um, 
God said, like, well, if you're a priest, well, then you can do all those things all the time, and and all the it's gonna be fulfilled in you and just welled up in you and and it was it just kind of hit me with a just this almost like just a, a shattering of of walls. I mean, I I had thought about it in um, in college. It's something that you know kind of hung around, but I kind of built up a lot of walls. Like, no, no, I've that's not for me. That's not for me. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do anything like that. That's for. That's for someone else. I just. It's, I'm. Sure, surely I'm. I'm meant to be married and have a family and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it was part of this men's group that I got a part of. But I kind of all these the things I loved about the church that maybe I, I hadn't been doing a ton of, um, especially when I was living on the East Coast in Maryland. Um, I kind of got back into those again, being with um, being with good good Catholic good Catholic men and in, in brotherhood and. Um, just being able to—I I, didn't do some teaching, but there's a lot of these things again. But it was in that adoration, that, that quiet time, um, and without that silence, I, I would not be here at seminary. That's—I can tell you that a hundred percent. So um, to get back to the original point of, t if you can make a silent retreat, I encourage you, even if it's just for a weekend. That's what mine was just, just for a weekend, and you heard it's—it was not complicated at all. And there's a bunch of places around here. There's, there's, uh, you know, Jesuit uh, retreat houses, other retreat houses that, if you go, they will lead you through it. If you, you've never made one, if you're nervous about making one, you know, I, I can't imagine not talking for an hour, much less, you know, a whole weekend. Trust me, you can do it, uh, and God will, you know, in that silence, will real, uh, will really show you a lot of things. All right, so yeah, it's um, it's it's great, yeah. So that's that's uh, kind of the, the kind of the little mini uh, uh, story of, of why I'm of why I'm here. All right, um, my dad asks, "Do the Cubs have? Oh, come on, Dad! Do the Cubs do, do the Cubs do enough of the trade line to make it to the World Series? World Series, and it's time to lose to the Indians." Um, well, the Indians traded away their best pitcher, um, so I'm not so sure they're going to make the World Series. Maybe not even the playoffs. And the White Sox look really good right now. Um, they're pretty hot. Um, I know about the Cubs. If they can get the, the kind of the their their main guys going again, if they can get that offense consistently going, um, as of right now, they are. Oh, they're winning six to one right now. That's pretty good. I well, as I looked, it was two to one. So. Um, some home runs, uh, Happ and Schwarber stay hot. So I don't know. I, I think they've got as good a chance as any. Uh, yeah, Kevin Clark. I, I agree. I, I think they got a massive roadblock in the in the, in the central with the uh, with the White Sox. I think they're pretty good. Uh, I do want to shout out to my uh, my grandma who's listening from uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Hi, grandma. Love you. Good to see you. Or good to. <laughs> I don't. I can't see you. But <laughs> good to. Uh, uh, Good, glad you're here. <laughs> there we go. Um, and uh, hopefully everyone's been praying for all the people who are in uh, in uh, uh, nursing homes and assisted living facilities and independent living facilities. All these places where um, you know more vulnerable populations to COVID. It's been uh, you know certainly very challenging in, in order to you know to stay to stay positive and whatnot. So um, hopefully you continue to to pray for it. Um, yeah, I've been feeling chased down by Bridget. Yeah, it just, it, sometimes it happens. And I, it's funny, I, I my, uh, my, you know, when I was in pre-theology here, I think I even said to, to one of my classmates, like, you know, I, I feel like there's, just, I need to have, you know, I've got a, a devotion to St. Peter. Um, I was really starting to develop a, a devotion to Blessed Pierre Giorgio Frassati. Um, you know, I've been starting to reading, reading some of the church fathers. I felt drawn to them, but I'm like, there's, I, of course there's Mary. This is not a slight ever against the Virgin Mother, um, but uh, I'm like that. I really feel like I'd love to have like, this this female saint to really uh, to really have this devotion to 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 kind of guide me through. Um, and I'm like, I, I, you know, I don't want to force anything. And it was it was kind of then. It was like Saint Therese really um, through talking with other guys, through through prayer, through reading. I just feel like she just like started popping up everywhere. So yeah, you'll, you you might feel that. So if if, if you do that. 
slide right into that. Dive into a saint chasing you down. Um, oh my gosh, my sister asked, who is your favorite sibling? I am uh, not going to answer that. Um, I'll, uh, I will say my favorite brother-in-law is Ian. My favorite sister-in-law is Brittany. My favorite brother is Danny. Um, and um, yeah, my favorite sister is, uh, is both of you, both of my sisters. I'm, I'm one of four. Um, it was fun. I, I, did, I did spend a lot of time with my siblings over the, uh, over the summer break. Um, I got to see my sister, uh, Keelene, who lives in Crystal Lake. I got to see her at all. I got to walk her dog a bunch. I got to play with the dog. She's got a great dog. Oh, that feels good. And um, uh, so I got to see them. I see my, um, my sister, Megan, and, and her husband, Ian, who live in the, down in the city. I got to see them a bunch. And then got to see my brother, Stella, and they have a, uh, a son now. They adopted a baby in February. And he, he'll be uh, one. Um, he'll be one in September. And then, what, two weeks, I think. So uh, he's, and he, if, if, if you follow me on, uh, on any sort of social media, you've seen him. He's, <laughs> he's, the, key, he's the cutest dang kid. Oh, my gosh. He is... Uh, just and I, I I I would use the word adorable, but we had a uh, our professor, uh, one of our professors on my first year said there there is only one uh, there is one only one baby who is adorable, and that is uh, Jesus because that's the only one literally the only baby who you, who you can adore. So I've, I've not, I don't use ador I haven't used adorable since, but if I could, it it would be uh, my nephew C. Uh, so it's great. Awesome, and, and of course, I'm spending a lot of time with my parents. So I get to see them almost every weekend. Uh, who is my favorite cousin in uh, in Ohio? Oh man, oh god. Uh, well, they all of them give me um, give me a lot of grief for a lot of grief for uh, going to U University of Michigan. So, my dad is from Cleveland, Ohio. My my grandma still lives Luke still lives there. My um, uncle and uh, an aunt and his wife live there. And then uh, a lot of my dad's uh, dad's cousins, extended family and whatnot still live in Ohio. And a bunch of them are, of course, if you're from Ohio, you're an Ohio State fan. And a bunch of them have gone to Ohio State. Um, I think there's, I don't know, a few of them even there now. And so I got a lot of grief, even for just visiting Michigan. <laughs> if you don't know that they're huge, huge, huge rivals. Oh my gosh, huge rivals, and so, um, so yeah, I, I get, I catch uh, a lot of slack, and of course, uh, I uh, Michigan has not fared well against Ohio State um, uh, in uh, in football in the last uh, uh, fifteen years, we'll say so. At least as long as I've I've been a fan, it's been it's been a little rough going for Michigan. Yeah, there was a, there was a day when I there was there was a day uh, in my life where I rooted for Ohio State. We actually. Um, uh, we went to a game when I was in uh, in high school, um, and uh, there's a there's a picture of of it was me and my my dad and my my uh, sister uh, Megan and my brother Danny and I'm wearing a Notre Dame sweatshirt. I was a huge Notre Dame fan at the time, and my brother is wearing an Ohio State hat because it was it was the, it was the Michigan, 2003 Michigan Ohio State game. Michigan won that game. Um, my first time ever in the big house. It was cool experience. I know it was, you know, I was a freshman in high school, I think. So I wasn't even, you know, thinking about college really at that point, much less Michigan. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, uh, once upon a time I've, I was a, uh, I rooted for Ohio state. I'll, I'll admit it. Um, but as of now, it's still Michigan. You can see me behind me. It's all my, uh, <laughs> my, did I have to turn the camera the right way? No, oh, I went to, uh, I'll move my head. There it is. You can see my, uh, my Michigan stuff. Fight song, Michigan hockey, Michigan still. Even though they were, they're not playing this this uh, this spring. All right. Well, I think that's uh, kind of near the end of, of our questions here. Unless anyone wants to get our uh, our last uh, a last minute question here. But it was great to be with you. Uh, hopefully, everyone's doing well. Um, I feel like we're starting to move back, sort of into some. Um, a little normal normalcy uh, in the church. Some ministries maybe opening back up, and um, 
that. Certainly, we have mass confessions and sacraments are, de are definitely available. Some we had some weddings happening, baptisms, of course. So it's good to really get going. And um, and please, if there's any way that I can uh, help, pray for you. And that's you know, all other seminarians would say the same. So Ryan um, and John, who are up in Minnesota, and then myself and Eric Schreifels, who's here with me at Mundelein. He's just starting first theology. Um, if there's anything we can do for you, please let us know. Um, no, last minute. So my dad wants me to, to uh, tell you about uh, my teaching parish. So everyone at Mundelein, every seminarian at Mundelein has what's called a teaching parish, part of this program that we, um, we go out and get pastoral experience. And so a lot of guys will go there on the weekends from, you know, be around for masses just to say hi to the people. And uh, uh, a lot of guys will have, have ministries there. So for the past few years, I've taught seventh grade religious education, um, which is for them confirmation prep. Um, that, got, that got delayed. And their, their confirmation actually is going to be in not this upcoming weekend, but the weekend after, September 13th. So if you can keep um, all the members of, of my, the parish I'm at, it's St. Juliana in uh, Edison Park, neighborhood in Chicago. If you know, it's a far northwest neighborhood. If you know where like Park Ridge, Niles is, um, it's right there. Um, awesome parish, great young pastor, Father James Wallace. Um, I'm super blessed to be there. There's um, a guy who um, I was there with for the last two years, just got ordained a deacon, you know, now a very good friend. Um, and he's assigned to a parish nearby there in Des Plaines, uh, or Mount, you know, Mount Prospect, excuse me. And so, um, yeah, it's a, it's a great parish. It's an awesome parish. Uh, uh, a lot of uh, Irish, a lot of uh, cops and firemen, um, a lot of great families. And so really excited to get back there. I'm, I went back there for, uh, for Father Hank, um, who's, who's my friend, uh, his first, first mass there. It's the only time I've been there uh, in, in the past bit. So I'll get to go back there for the confirmation. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and I'll get to spend the whole next semester on my internship there. That would be great. So yeah, that's my that's it's it's great. And every every guy um, again has ha, has there. So all, all the all the Rockford seminarians here we have. Oh, let's see. There are five, seven, six or seven guys there. We have two new pre theologians, um, and then there's two guys in my class, and then there's two guys in the class underneath. So there's six six no seven guys. There's a guy in PT two, pre theology two. So seven guys from from Rockford, uh, Rockford here. Um, so that's great. And they're able to go to parishes uh, out, out in Rockford, the Red Diocese of Rockford. So anyway, it was a real pleasure being with everyone tonight. Um, know of my prayers of you. Please uh, keep praying for, for me, for all the um, seminarians from St. Thomas, for all the seminarians at Mundelein, uh, for all the seminarians in the Archdiocese of Chicago and the Diocese of Rockford. And um, it's certainly going to be a challenging semester in terms of, of dealing with, you know, all the and all the pandemic stuff, it's, um, which, you know, we wish it had gone away. It's, of course, it's a very, very much so a part of our lives. Um, and, and yeah, know my prayers for you. And anything that I can do, um, I, I get back to Crystal Lake a, a fair bit um, to visit my parents and, and, uh, and say hi. So, um, yeah, really, again, a real pleasure for being here tonight. And uh, maybe we'll do, again, one of these in the future. If there's uh, any interest in... Uh, anything specific with the seminarians or anything you, you, you'd want us to do, uh, you know, reach out to, to Father Evans, um, to Allison, and, and, and anyone, and let us know. So let's end with a, with a, um, with a closing prayer here, uh, and then uh, everyone have a great night. And Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, thank you for giving us this time together. Thank you for all the blessings you've given us. You've given St. Thomas, all the parishioners. Keep them safe, keep them patient, keep them understanding during, again, this difficult time uh, in the pandemic. Yes, you send your spirit down upon all of us for healing, for knowledge, for wisdom, for understanding, and for love. And we pray this all in your na Son's name as we give glory to God the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. All right, everyone. Have a great night and God bless.